Okay, then let's start. So we are going to spend together some time um, talking and exploring how Lucene runs through queries so that they are not too slow. So before we start, some background about myself. So I've been working in search for some time now. And in particular, I've been a Lucene commuter since 2012. And I've been working at Elastic since 2013. And query processing is part of the things I enjoy working on. So that's something I, that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So query processing tends to be an interesting topic at Buzzword. Earlier today, we had a talk by Alan Woodward about how Lucene uses uh, queries and collectors as a framework uh, works so that you can find matches in your invert indices. And also in the past, if you look at the, the history of talks that we had at Berlin Buzzword, we already, we already had some talks about query processing and in particular how we can make queries faster. For instance, in 2015, we had a talk about using SIMD instructions, so simple um, instruction multiple data instruction in order to speed up the decoding of postings, which can be useful in order to make term queries and symbol combination of term queries using Boolean queries faster. And for instance, in 2012, we had another talk by St Stefan Paul about uh, an algorithm which is called MaxCore, which can be used in order to speed up disjunctions. So queries that look like A or B or C or potentially more clauses. But today we are going to do something else something else, which is talking about slow queries and how Lucene deals with them. And I think that's especially interesting because that's something that Lucene only started tackling about two years ago, in spite of the fact that Lucene has been, ha has been out for something like 15 to 20 years now. So first we need to explain what a slow query is. So if you look at queries, the, their main responsibility, as far as matching is concerned, let's forget scoring entirely for now, is that per segment, they need to produce an iterator over the IDs, and that iterator needs to be in the ID order. That property is very important because the fact that this stream of the IDs is in order is very helpful in order to run efficient conjunctions, so A and B and C and potentially other clauses, or disjunctions, A or B or C. And from those iterators, we expect that they have two uh, properties in order to be fast. First, they need to be able to iterate over matches efficiently, meaning that given a match in the index, they need to be able to very quickly find the next match, so the next doc ID in the doc ID order that also matches the query. And also, they need to be able to efficiently skip over large ranges of doc IDs which are not useful. And that skip um, feature is especially, use, especially useful for conjunctions. So, as you might have guessed uh, now, if a query is slow, it means that at least one of the two properties is not honored. And actually, that's where I wanted to go because we have two kinds of slow queries. First, we have the queries that can't iterate efficiently, and those queries would be queries like phrase queries and script queries. The common property of these queries is that they have a lot of work to do on a per document basis in order to check whether or not it matches the query. So in the case of scripts, you need to run the scripts. If you don't run the script, you can't know whether or not the document matches the query. And in the case of phrases, you have a lot of positions to read in order to check whether or not the two words that you're searching for can be found at consecutive positions in your index. Okay, so that's a lot of work to do per document. And then we have a second class of queries which are queries that can't skip. So when I say they can't skip, I'm a bit lying. Actually, the iterator that they provide, that those queries provide, it can skip. But those queries are based on data structure that make it very hard to return iterators that are in order. They are very good at finding the matches, but they are going to produce doc IDs out of order. And so something that Lucene needs to do in order to make them fit the framework is to take all those matching doc IDs, then sort them so that it can produce an in-order iterator. But the fact that it needs to take all the matching doc IDs and resort them means that doc IDs that you do not care about because you're going to skip over them in anyway, you also have to pay the cost for them. So uh, it means you can't benefit from skipping on those queries. And we'll see that for those two kinds of queries, we have ways that we can make them perform better. In the general case, you can't, you can't speed 
those queries up in all cases. For instance, if you look at phrase queries, there is a lot of work that you need to do on a per document basis, and that's it. If you want to find all documents that match a phrase, then you need to iterate over. Let's say you're searching for Quick and Fox. You need to find all documents that contain both Quick and Fox, and then for all those documents, you need to check positions. So there is not really anything you can do. However, in some, case, some cases, we're going to see that, especially when they're used in conjunctions, we can make things better. And in order to explain why, I need to first explain to you how conjunctions work. So, like I said, Lucene is about producing, sorry, um, queries are about producing sorted iterators per segment over the matching doc IDs. So in that case, we have two terms, quick and fox, and we want to find all the documents that contain both terms, so both quick and fox. When Lucene wants to run a conjunction, the first thing it's going to do is to look at index statistics in order to figure out which one of the clauses has the least number of matches. In that case, it, it's quick. And that particular clause is going to be used in order to lead the iteration. Okay, that's going to be helpful in order to do as little work as possible. And basically, the next step is to pull an iterator over those posting lists, which is represented by the blue arrows that you can see there. And then, iteratively, we are going to first we're going to start iterating using the clause that matches the least number of documents. And then we are going to use other clauses as follow-ups in order to check whether or not they match the same documents. So first, we advanced the first clause to the first matching document, which was two. And then we asked other clauses, in that case, we only have one uh, document that match Fox, to move to the next document that greater than or equal to two that also contains Fox. And we moved to three. Three is greater than two, so we know we don't have a match on two. So then we need to go back to the first person list and ask it, what's the first document you have that greater than or equal to three? And that time we figure out that we have a match because all postings are positioned on the same doc ID. We have a match. And then we keep do doing that until we find all the matches in, that are contained by both posting lists. And that logic that we use for conjunctions is very efficient because in spite of the fact that we have, I, I counted, I don't remember exactly, but we have something like 15 matching doc IDs in total. We only need, needed to move the cursor seven times, okay, for both postings. So that's what makes conjunctions efficient. And you might be wondering, how can this be efficient? Because in order to find the first document, for instance, that greater than or equal to 50, we have to go over a lot of documents, but posting list, they embed something that is called a skip list, which can be used in order to efficiently skip uh, over documents that are not needed. So those operations are efficient. And that algorithm, which we just described, is called leapfrog. So you might already have read a bit about Lucene, conjunctions, and so if you, if you read about leapfrog, that's the very same algorithm which I just described, which uh, is referred to. So that's how it works in the base case. Okay, we are running conjunction over two fast queries, which are term queries some queries, which directly encode the result set in the inverted index using postings. But sometimes we have three iterators. So like we said before, things like phrase queries and script queries. For instance, let's imagine that you want to find all documents that contain two and B at consecutive positions. That query is going to be particularly expensive due to the fact that two and B, two and B uh, can very likely be found in many documents. So there are many Many times, you'll have to read positions in order to check whether the documents that contain both 2 and B actually contain them at consecutive positions. Which means that if you want to implement an iterator for that particular query, it's going to be very expensive because on many documents, it's going to have to read positions in order to check whether or not the document you're looking at matches or not. We said we are interested in conjunctions, so in that particular case, we are going, I'm going to take an example where the user wants to find all documents that contain both Shakespeare and 2NB as a phrase query, meaning they should be found at consecutive positions. So we have something like that, where again, we are going to use the same algorithm, the leapfrog algorithm, in order to find matches. First, so we have Shakespeare, which, is, which can be found in fewer documents, so we are going to use it as a lead. First, we advance it, we are on document one. And then we ask to be to find the first document that greater than or equal to one. So first we advance to two, but we read which contains both two and B, but actually even though it contains both terms, 
those two terms can't be found at consecutive positions. So we move to the next document that contains both terms, and again, it doesn't match until we reach five, where those two terms can be found at consecutive positions. You might be thinking, what PT that we checked positions on documents that did not end up matching, but actually even for document five, it's a pity that we had to check positions because document five does not match Shakespeare. And it would be much cheaper if we were able to check that that particular document, document five, doesn't contain Shakespeare before we start checking positions, which is something which is much more expensive. And that's the reason why in Lucin 5.1, so about two years ago, we introduced something which is called two-phase iteration. And two-phase iteration allows the iterator over to be as a phrase, to be split into two components. One of them is an approximation, which matches a superset of the documents that would match uh, the to be phrase. And that approximation indicates a phrase query that all the documents that contain both to and be. And then we have a confirmation step, um, which is going to read positions in order to confirm whether or not a particular document contains both terms at consecutive positions. Just to be clear, that's the way that phrase queries have always worked, but the thing that we introduced in Lucin 5.1 is the ability through a, new, through a new API to execute the approximation and the confirmation separately. And that new API can be very useful when you're in conjunctions because that means that you can reach agreement between all approximations before you start executing the costly bits, such as reading positions, uh, running a scripts, etc. And in addition to that, we have a match cost API so that you can run the cheaper bits first. So let's think about an even more complicated query where you want to find all documents that both match a script and contain a phrase. First, we are going to find all documents that contain the two terms of the phrase, and then we are going to look at the match cost API of both the script and the phrase, and depending on which one is more expensive, we are going to run the least uh, expensive one first. So, that's it for, oops, for two-phase iteration. So just to give a couple of examples, so we just talked about phrase queries, which split the approximation and the confirmation into a conjunction and uh, an additional step that checks position, but that also ge generalizes well with script queries. In the case of a script query, the approximation would be simply a query that matches all documents, and as a confirmation, we are going to execute the script to check whether or not the query matches the script. And then we have compound queries, like Boolean queries, constant source queries, that propagate the two-phase iterator, so that let's imagine that you have a very complex query tree. At the deepest level, you have a phrase query, and at the top level, you have a filter, which is a very fast filter, a filter on a term. The fact that Boolean queries and constant score queries propagate the two-phase iterators means that you're only going to check whether the phrase matches on documents that also match the top-level filter. Okay, so that optimization does not only apply to a single conjunction, uh, it also propagates the, the two-phase iterator uh, up to the top of the tree, the query tree. So that's it for two-phase iteration, and now we are going to talk about the second class of slow queries, which are queries that can't skip. And I'm talking about that one uh, as, as a second step because that one actually increments on the improvements that we, we made with two-phase iteration. So first, I need to explain why those queries are slow. So if you look at that tree, that's something that's very similar to a BKD tree, a single dimension BKD tree, which is a data structure that we are using with points in order to run range queries on numeric fields. So basically, you have a tree where on the leaves you have pairs that consist of the doc ID, uh, an, an identif identifier of the document, as well as the value that's associated with that document. And then that tree is going to be organized by value, and on every inner node of the tree, we are going to record the range of the values that can be found on leaves under that particular node. So that, for instance, at the root level, you can know that all values contained in that tree are all within 10 and 40. On the left, on the tree, all values are within 10 and 20. On the right, 20 and 40, etc. So you can see how this data structure is very efficient at finding all documents that match a range, because as you walk down the tree, you can quickly eliminate um, parts of the tree that are never going to match, because there is no intersection with the range of your query. Okay, so that's 
um, the data structure that we are using in order to execute range queries with Lucene. But because it's organized by value and not by doc ID, let's imagine that you still have the data structure and you want to check whether or not document 5, for instance, matches a particular query. There is no way that you can know which branch of the tree you should follow in order to find document 5, which means that this data structure is very good at finding all documents that match a range, but it's very bad at verifying whether a very small set of documents match a range. Which means that if you're on a query that looks like that, so you have a very restrictive query, such as a query in an ID field, okay, on the one hand, and on the other hand, you have a numeric range query okay, on a very large range, which is likely to match many documents. In spite of the fact that the left side of the query maybe matches only one document, you're going to pay the price for collecting all the matches, okay, using the tree to collect all the matches for the range query before you can start running the intersection between the queries. And that's what makes it slow. But there's another way that we can run range queries with Lucene. And in particular, we have another data structure that we can encode in the index, which is called dog values. And if you're not familiar with dog values, that's um, a fancy name that just means that we have a way to store a columnar representation of your data in the index. And that columnar representation can be used to run range queries using two-phase iteration, which we just talked about. So as an approximation, we are going to use a, a query that matches everything, a match rule, just like we did for scripts. And as a confirmation, we are going to use dog values in order to read the value for a particular document and check whether or not it's in the range. Just to be clear, using this kind of query based on dog values to run ranges all the time is at least in the majority of cases, a bad idea. Because if you want to find all documents that match a range, you have no choice but to do a linear scan. So visit every possible document in your index and check whether or not it's in the range, okay? which is something we need to avoid. The previous data structure, the tree we just saw, is much better at finding all the matches. However, things are a bit different when you use a range in a conjunction. In particular, if you use points. So let's say that you have a very simple query that looks like a term query, which is intersected to term query and a range query. What's going to be the cost of running that whole query, depending on how the range uh, is implemented? If you're using points, basically, the cost of that query is going to be driven by um, the cost of finding all the matches for the range. So basically, the cost is going to be linear with the total number of documents that match the range. The range. On the other hand, if, you're on, if you use doc values in order to implement the range, what Lucene is going to do with two-phase iteration is that it's going to iterate over all the matches of the term query and check whether or not they match the range with doc values. So that time, the cost is the number of checked documents, which is the number of documents of the other clause of the conjunction. And as you can imagine, there are cases when using points is going to be cheaper, and there are cases when using doc values is going to be cheaper. And so, how can we decide which one to use? And in Lucene 6.5, sorry, which has been released um, earlier this year, we added a new query, which is used index or dog values query. Oops, there's a typo, sorry for that. Um, which uh, is going to look at index statistics in order to figure out which strategy it should use in order to execute a range query. And essentially, it's going to use at the point query which, to which we added a new API so that it can estimate how many documents it's going to match just by looking at the tree, which can be done, done cheaply. And then it looks at all the components of the conjunction. And basically, if the range is going to be the clause that has the least number of documents, which means it's going to drive the iteration, then we're going to use points, which are a much better, better data structure in order to find all the matches for a particular query. But on the other hand, if the range query is not going to drive the iteration, and it's only going to be used to check whether documents from other clauses match the entire Boolean query, then we should use doc values. So that works well in theory, but it's still important to run a, a benchmark just to make sure it works as expected. And so when we worked on that issue, we, we ran a benchmark over a, din, sorry, a 10 million uh, subset of Wikipedia that has in particular a body field where you have the content of the article and a date field that's the last modification date of the article. 
And then I've been running queries that look like that, so a term query on the body intersected with a range query on the last modification date. And I've been plotting the latency of the query, so the entire Boolean query, term query and range query, based on the total number of documents that the range matches. So when looking at the next slide, be aware that it's using a logarithmic scale, both on the x and y axis. And here's what it gave. So that's actually the first test which I ran. And as you can see, so here, so let's start with a simple one. The dog values line, which is the green line, so it's a bit hard to read, but the green line is this one, okay? So we can see that the cost is always the same no matter how many documents match the range query. And that's actually expected because, like we said before, with dog, value, with dog values, the way that the range query works, the, sorry, the entire Boolean query works is that we are going to iterate over all the matches for the term query and check the dog values range. So the number of documents that match the range does not actually matter, which is confirmed by this benchmark. Now, if you look at points, which are the purple line, so which is here, then we said that the cost of the Boolean query is mostly dependent on the total number of documents that match the range. And again, expect here, which I'm going to talk a bit about later, we have indeed a relationship between the number of documents that match the range, which is here expressed as a percentage of the total number of documents in the index, um, and the latency, which is on the y axis. And we are quite lucky in that case that the new index of dog values query that we worked on, which is a blue line, so it's again hard to read, but that would be that line, actually makes the perfect decision in low cases, and before that threshold, which is uh, the number of documents that match the term query is going to use points, which are more efficient when it comes to driving iteration of the conjunction, but afterwards it's going to use dog values, which, like we saw, are more efficient when it comes to only checking whether documents that match the term query also match the range. Um, and again, uh, it, it brings some interesting speed ups. So it's hard to, to realize. Uh, due to the log logarithmic scale, but here what we observe is actually a 30 times speed up, which is significant. And okay, so that thing we see here is actually due to an optimization we have uh, with points, because when we match more than, more than half of the index, we have an optimization so that we are going to compute all documents that do not match uh, the range query and inverse that. And the optimization uh, that index or dog values query performs is not aware of that optimization. But unfortunately, things are not always that, that good. And this is the same benchmark, same data set. The only thing which I changed here is that I replaced the term from the term query with another term, which is previously it matched 0.1% of the index, and this time it's matching 1% of documents in the index. And this time we can see that we are not always making the right decision, okay? So, because we are switching at 1% between points in purple and dog values here, in spite of the fact that points are still more efficient than dog values, up to something like 8% of the index. And similarly, due to the optimization we have for ranges on points, points again become faster than dog values when you have more than something like 80% um, matches. So, um, as a conclusion, this optimization tends to be good on average, but unfortunately, it can make the wrong decision sometimes, and that's something that I would personally like to fix, but it's hard. Okay, we, we are working on heuristics, and we are trying to compare costs of different queries, even though they do very different operations, which m makes it very challenging. Um, I've been describing this optimization for range queries, but actually it works exactly the same way for geo queries, and in particular bounding box queries and geo distance queries, which works exactly the same way as the range queries on one dimension. They are just a generalization for multiple dimensions. And there are still things to do. So, like I said, the heuristic still needs improving because sometimes it, it makes the wrong decision. Patches are welcome if you have ideas how to fix that. And there are some queries that we would also like to fix. So for instance, prefix, wildcard, and regular expression-based queries have the same issue, that they can't skip efficiently. They need to collect all the matches before you can start doing any work on the doc ID set, because we need sorting. 
And we also don't have range queries and range fields. The range, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the range field, but that's something that we introduced in Lucene 6.1, I think. That's the ability to, to index a range and then to search for overlapping, overlapping ranges. So let's say that you index a range which consists of 0 to 2. If you search for 1 to 5, then this is going to intersect, so there is a match. If you search for 10 to 12, it's not going to intersect, so you're not going to have a match. And um, the main reason why we haven't done that so far is that we do not have dog value support for range fields so far, which is, again, something that we could think about uh, adding. Um, that's everything I wanted to say, so if you have questions, please go ahead. So again, the last point that you, thanks for the talk anyway. Um, again, the range queries and the range fields. So how do, I thought that's the whole concept behind having range fields. So if you don't, if you cannot apply range queries on it, so how do you use it? So you, you can apply range queries on them, but we don't have the optimization to use dog values automatically okay. Okay. when it's supposedly more efficient. But at the same time, uh, range fields tend to be more selective queries, range queries on range fields tend to be more selective queries. So the, the optimization is not as much needed, on average, I would say, but still, it would be good to have a very similar optimization. Thank you. Okay. So, j just to finish on that one, we do support querying uh, range fields with range queries, and actually, we support multiple uh, kind of relations. We support intersects within uh, contains and disjoint. So, there is really a variety of queries that you can run on range fields, and it works. <laughs> We just don't have the optimization. Yes? Uh, does it ever make sense to run two strategies in parallel and whichever one finishes first, you're done? Or is, you know, if, if the choice is too hard between? I guess, so th that's a good question. There's a trade-off. So it depends whether what you want to improve is latency or throughput, because that kind of strategy would bring probably a better latency, because you would get whichever returns first, but at the same time, at the same time, you would have twice the cost, so you could have worse throughput. Um, that's something that you can totally do on, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be implemented in Lucene. That's something that you can do by using Lucene API. You can run, so you can build two queries, one with dog values in order to run the range, and the other one with points in order to run the range, and then spans two threads, which are going to run the query in parallel, and get whichever result comes first. That's something you could do with the API as it is today. All right. I think we're good. Thank you very much, Adrian. You're welcome. <laughs>